perhaps you want to rekindle that spark that you had with your spouse or you're watching this video after a breakup and you want to understand how you can make your ex fall back in love with you i'm going to explain you whether you're in relationship or after a breakup what you should be doing right away to fall back in love i get my ex back.com everyone deserves a second chance before i start i want to remind you that i put together first a quiz for you to know if you have any chance to get back with your ex the idea is to provide you a tool uh, to give you some indications whether you have a chance or not to get back with your ex because sometimes people are, are watching videos about breakups and no contacts and they're applying tips online but in reality the chances that they will get back with their ex are slim to none and therefore it's better for you to move on as quickly as possible rather than uh, trying to get hold or build that obsession of getting back with your ex there's also a link to get in touch with me if you want to ask me any question if you want to get in touch with me there's a, a link to speak with me on whatsapp also if you like this content if you want to watch other videos don't hesitate to like and subscribe and have a look in the description there are also there are other uh, free resources for you to look at to learn to grow to feel better with your relationship to feel better about yourself because sometimes after a breakup it's really hard um, and i understand this pain i've been in your shoes you'll see in this video i'm going to explain you how you can feel better how you can change also the way you see love let's let's challenge ourselves to redefine love so falling in love the term falling in love it's very interesting because when we talk about falling in love we have this idea of this lack of control um, we didn't plan falling in love it's by definition something unconscious something you didn't decide you didn't decide to fall in love with your ex or with your spouse one day you met that person and you felt there was something special and you felt there was something different and over time weeks and months you've learned to perhaps love and build something strong with that person but initially you didn't decide it's not like a morning you woke up and say like i'm gonna fall in love with that person because you didn't know that person or maybe you were friends but something at some stage unconsciously made you fall in love with you and the challenge i want you to or the, the question i want you to ask yourself is whether breakup is also unconscious very frequently we think that our ex our partner made the decision to end things in a rational way uh, they've analyzed the situation they had a pros and cons list and therefore they decided to end the relationship what you have to understand is and there's been dozens of studies about that there's the number one reason people break up is communication something that happened um, the lack of communication the problem of expressing your needs that happened over months and years and over months and years of building potentially that resentment one of the two in the relationship decides i prefer to end things because i feel i'm not understood i feel we don't have that connection anymore um, we transition as we transition from passion uh, to intimacy and to relationship communication is essential because i think at the beginning passion is enough you don't necessarily need to communicate but when we build something when we create intimacy when we create those moments when we think about the future when we think about how i can feel secure with you communication is very important and so if you're watching this video and you recently broke up with your ex there are statistically 60 to 70 percent chance that is because of communication and it has nothing to do with their feelings it has nothing to do with your compatibility sometimes people call me they've been together for six months and i do a, a situational uh, assessment on that's what we do in psychotherapy and very quickly sometimes i feel like okay well you're not compatible you know he's pretty much looking after those things you're pretty much looking after those things your values are conflicting each other no wonder it didn't work but in your case in 
the cases of my clients, it's not about compatibility, it's not about feelings. It's about communication, it's about the perception of that relationship, the perception of you and them. And this can be changed. Okay, let's look at some tips. First tip is a very big misconception and it works if you're in a relationship, if you are about to get married or if you want to rekindle um, your relationship with your partner. Spending time together is not necessarily quality time. You can be roommates. I've had that, that comment from a client recently. We're living together, but we were roommates. We didn't share anything. We didn't have conversation. We had dinner and I was asking him, you know, how was work? And he was saying like, good, people closed off, you know? The problem with life is that things get in the way. I have two kids, it gets busy. I have a work, I have a job. My wife, my wife has a job. We have a wacky cat. We are very busy. And so what we have to do as a couple, I'm taking a personal example, and that's why I advise also my, my clients when they see, uh, when I have couple consultation, is how can you carve out time to spend quality time? I live with my wife, I spend 30 to 40 hours uh, per week with her, but it's not always quality time. I'm with the kids, we're going, I don't know, shopping, we're talking a lot about logistics, about the kids, about holidays, about what we're going to plan for the weekend. We see a lot of friends, but is it really quality time? No. Quality time is really when you carve out, it could be just an hour per, per week, and actually it's well, it's more than enough. One hour dedicating to your partner, to listening to their needs, to ask questions, to build intimacy, to show your problem, to discuss about the problem, to discuss about your fear. This is how you create intimacy. This is how you create connection with someone. So there's another element that how you can also bring novelty to your life. You know, one thing to counteract this <laughs> uh, roommate dynamic, my cat wants to <laughs> participate in this video is to bring novelty you know maybe this week you're gonna go for a walk some place you've never been to you're gonna visit a new restaurant you're gonna do something new um, there's also something very interesting I don't remember when I read that but it's very interesting to learn something new with your partner something new and you build that skill set together communication tip number two the importance of deep conversation. I might do a video on this, probably a course on this, but it is essential. Nowadays, and I've been guilty of that for many years, people feel more comfortable having shallow interaction, uh, conversations, either because they don't know how to do it. That was my case. I didn't know um, how to connect um, emotionally with someone and, and at a deeper level. Some people are scared. Um, some people don't have time, some people get up, cut off with other things, some people are stressed and they pre it prevents them from having those conversations. So there's been a study in the 19, 1997 from Dr. Aaron where he took random people, strangers, and uh, one group, they were asking small talk, talking about uh, having small talks for 30 minutes. The other group, total strangers to each other, they had a list of questions that were really intimate. And they asked afterwards to rate their competitivity and their attractiveness. And by far the second group built stronger connection. And I think, but it's a bit of an exception, one of them got married in the end. One of the, the couple got married in the end. And that's not relevant to the experiment because I guess you can't draw any conclusion from that. But it's very interesting to see that when you bring strangers and they didn't choose them because of their compatibility, um, their style, their psychology, that's, took random people and it took like one heterosexual woman, one heterosexual man together and the same for two groups. By far they felt more connected, they felt that person, I got I'm more into that person because I was able to manage to get into that uh, deep emotional um, state or connection. The beauty with those conversation, and again you don't need to spin to spend thousands of hours per month. I don't think if you have thousands of hours per month, hundreds of hours per month on this. 
it's really that, and again, there's been studies about that. People who have those conversations are happier. They show that they are more fulfilled. They show that they are, can trust their partner. Trust is also very important, obviously. And one, three things you can discuss, and I've mentioned that before. Why don't you talk about the problems you have? Problems you have at work, problems you have with your, I don't know, family, challenges at work. Can you help me fix this? I need your help for this. Embarrassment, uh, one of the, for example, one of the questions in the, uh, in the study was talking about this, something embarrassing that happened when you were young. That shows vulnerability, that shows about your, yourself, a hidden part of yourself. That's the beauty of a relationship. We are very complex people. And every day you can learn something new about your partner. Every day they can learn something new about yourself. It's a discovery, that's wonderful. So you have to also acknowledge this. I think a lot of people tend to think that because that person is familiar, I know them. No, you don't know them. If you think about it, do you know yourself? Do you know yourself well enough? Every day I learn about myself. So no wonder you'll be learning about yourself, but you could also be learning about your spouse. It's very important for you to understand this. Another way to engage and have those deep um, conversations is the fear. I'm scared of, you know, having, um, I'm scared of this new job. I'm scared that, um, you know, this promotion have a feel this imposter syndrome. So of course, your job as a partner is, to, is not to act as a therapist, but to be supportive, to understand, to build and have those conversations. Communication tip number three, it's obvious, but it is probably the most common one and the, the one that kills relationship for good. It's not addressing important issues. Perhaps that was the case for you in a relationship. You had, at some point, a discussion about, I don't know, whether having, we should have kids, whether you should, we should move in together. And probably one of, of you uh, started the conversation and was told off or was denied the opportunity to discuss this. Or perhaps you had this desire to have kids and you knew that your partner had strong uh, view on this and you were scared of addressing this. And what happens when you have those missed opportunity to address important issues, this is where things are drifting apart slowly but surely. And it's really hard to adjust when things are not addressed um, over a couple of weeks, months, sometimes years. Because we feel I can't really express my needs, I can't really be free, I can't really achieve what I want to achieve. I'm restraining myself. And a relationship is, of course, how you can bond with someone. But if you feel imprisoned in a relationship, no wonder people want to escape. If you feel imprisoned that in this relationship, I can't be my true self. I have to pretend to be someone. I have to forget about my dreams. No wonder people will give up, not give up, but will quit this relationship. So... Be mindful of these taboo talks because they are building resentments and as I said, they are pushing the relationship to fail for sure. Now, we're going to talk again about breakup because probably this, that's the reason you're watching this video. So you broke up way about now. The, the biggest mistake people make is that because, as I said, most relationship problems are communication based. I need to communicate with my ex. We had a communication problem, I need to over communicate with my ex. This is how I'm gonna fix this. I haven't been a good communicator for 20 years. This breakup opened my eyes that I need to communicate more with my spouse. I need to talk more about my feelings and my needs. I need to be able to be a good listener, to show empathy. Well, sad news for you, it's too late. You've had opportunities to do that. Many times you've had the opportunity to do that. And I'm here to tell you that you've missed your chance. That's a fact. However, I'm not here to tell you that you should give up. There's a distinction between 
saying no to the past relationship, accepting that you can't talk your ex out of their decision. I'm pretty sure that you've tried already and that's why you're watching this video. So what are your options? People are still in love when they break up. Again, that's a fact. Vast majority of people, when they break up with their partner, they are still in love, they still have feelings for them. But at the same time, they feel that they've tried. They feel that they try to address issues, to talk about things. Um, perhaps they didn't tell you things, but their non-verbal cues, they felt they were more distant, less intimate, you know, when people tell me, yeah, we haven't had sex for the last two years, well, that's a strong sign that there's a disconnection between you two. And at some stage, that hope of reconciliation, that hope that this would work, is gone. They feel helpless, hopeless. But deep inside, if you think about it, and that's the thing I want you to remember today. Deep inside, if you're watching this video and you've been together with your partner, and you've had something special, unique, they told you, I've never been like this my whole life. You're someone special. I've never had such a connection with someone. If that person decides to end a relationship, what do you think they would want? They would want to get back to those moments. They would want to recreate that connection. I've never been with someone like this. I've never had that connection with someone. What's the normal thing to do is I want to chase after this. I want you to succeed. It didn't work out in the end, but you made me happy. I was happy with you. We had something. Of course, they would want to get back to this. And again, I'm not talking about all relationships. And I'm probably talking to people who recognize themselves in this. Probably describe <laughs> the, um, the profile of my clients. That's what they have. They had something special, something happened. Communication, uh, kids, attachment styles, different things pushed their partner to end the relationship. But deep inside, they want you to succeed. Deep inside, they want to be happy. Deep inside, they want that family that you built together. So never ever forget this. If, for example, you took the test and you have a score above 15, above 20, so you're sure that you had something special, that you're sure that we can leverage that history, those values, well, your ex wants you to succeed. Deep inside, they want you to succeed. They won't tell you, of course, because otherwise it would be too easy. They won't tell you, of course, get back with me, I want you because they were disappointed, perhaps a few times, but they want you to succeed. And so what you have to do right now is reset. It's really about resetting, resetting the dynamic, because as we discussed over time, massive resentment build up. So you need to let time to let the, the tension disappear. Period of no contact, not engaging with your ex, not trying to over communicate or to talk them out. Give also time for yourself to heal and work on yourself because there are things, I guess, that you need to work on. Perhaps it's about your lifestyle, perhaps it's about your uh, work life balance, perhaps it's about your, I don't know, you have anger issues, perhaps it's about learning about your attachment style, understanding that now you get that your um, dismissive avoidance and how you can reconnect with your spouse at a deeper level. But have you understood that you're an anxious person and how can you manage this anxiety? Especially when uh, trying to recover the relationship, being anxious can be detrimental. What you have to understand is you can and you should communicate with your ex at some stage, but you should do it at the right time. At a time where you've done substantial work on yourself, at a time where you feel more detached, less emotionally involved in the breakup because you have to accept that this relationship is gone. What you have to do now is to create a new relationship. 
And of course, it's complex. Of course, there's a lot of emotion. Of course, you might be sad. Of course, you might feel demotivated. You might feel like there's no hope. You might feel that I've tried everything. Again, if you have a score on the quiz, uh, if you spoke with, if you speak with me, and we have a, a an honest discussion about your situation, and we discuss, and we assess that actually there's a chance for you to get back together, yes, you can do. You can have, um, we can discuss about a plan to really re-engage. So whether it's about having starting a no contact, whether it's about breaking no contact, whether it's about the communication, how to answer, how to engage with your partner. We can discuss about that. So give me a shout if you need any help on how to plan this because it's complex, because it's confusing, because there's so many uncertainties. I'd be more than happy to help you and shed some lights on this. Other than that, oh yeah, <laughs> I was now I'm, I'm ending on this. A massive thank you uh, to everyone joining. Uh, we are growing community and I love the support. I love those comments. I love reading your comments. I love reading your reviews. Um, and I think this week I'm going to read reviews at the end of each video. This one is from Glenn. Alex, you are the most amazing person I've ever met. The sessions were extremely draining for me because I'm not used to talking about my relationship. But it was all worth it. My relationship with my partner is going well. Thank you very much. I'm blushing almost. Take care of yourself if you want to. Uh, share the love. Don't hesitate to also have a look on my Trust Pilot page um, and to subscribe and like. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance.